<laughs> so just give me a second to see if it's sharing. Okay. I think it's live on Facebook now, from what I can see. Can you? Okay, so it's not it's not set up yet fully on my side here in the Okay, we're live. Brilliant. Brilliant. Let me see. Um okay, I think we are live. I just want to set up my phone here. So you are very welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Martha Fraser. I am an online business mentor and coach, and I'm the founder of The Shine Adventure, an online program to help you expand your business online. And I am joined with the amazing Kerry Manning, who is a branding expert, and we are doing a four-day challenge of how to um, make brands. So very excited, Kerry. Yesterday <laughs> was brilliant. Um, and um, today I'm, I've had a couple of people message me saying they've done their homework and they're looking forward to oh, Very good. So, um, okay. So, um, okay. I just seen there that we're on Facebook. I just want to check the feed there. Yes, we are. And yesterday I have to apologize because I missed um, some of the questions, um, but I'm going to be looking at my feed here on my phone while on the laptop here. So we're in full control today. Okay. So, um, yeah. So, uh, what, what, was, what was your, what, what was your, your big feedback takeaway from yesterday? I think my biggest, and, and it's funny actually, because I think this always happens whenever a live stream ends. The, oh, sorry. Someone is trying to call me on Facebook. Sorry. I just have to, whoops. Go decline that. The joy of technology. Uh, yeah, the joy of technology. Actually, see, that's the one thing, actually. You can't actually um, pause uh, Facebook calls or mute them, you know, if you're on live stream, unless, of course, you turn off uh, Facebook. Anyway, okay, so my biggest takeaway yesterday was in the conversation that we had afterwards, and I said to you, I said my biggest takeaway from that call was that um, our brand is speaking for us, whether we make an effort to create a brand or not, or what the amount of work we put into the brand, um, you know, Yes, our brand speaks for us, whether we have actually created the brand or not. Whatever you are doing, whatever way you're putting yourself out there, your message, your image, your content, how you're showing up is your brand. So whether you actually put effort into it or not, there is a conversation going on about you and your brand out there. So I think that was the biggest awareness for me was that... Um, you know, whether you think you do or you don't have a brand, you do. Um, and then how good the brand is, is the awareness part and how much effort needs to go into it after that is. I also yeah. think it's a case of taking control of your brand, because as you're saying, you've got a brand that's out there anyway, but whether you can take control of it and be in control of it. So the um, the questions, the five words that we asked everyone to do is the homework yesterday is part of just understanding what your brand is and what your brand existence is. So what people are thinking of you. And yeah. I know that it's always a shock when you get somebody who's terribly honest with you. There's one word that comes and you think, that's not me. But when you think about it, it actually is you. Did you manage to get some words done? I did. <laughs> I'm not going to make you share them live, but just tell me what your feelings are having read those words. Um, yeah, no, I'll share them because I think I think this is the whole point of it, right? The whole exercise. Um, let me just see now. Okay, so um, so I have got from friends and family. So um, understanding, helpful, logical, heart, heartful, which I thought was a really that's nice, great one. That's a really nice word. Heartful, um, determined, passionate, driven. Caring, strong, knowledgeable. Those are great words. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, and then for myself, um, um, sorry, for myself, then I am. Um, you said five words that I would describe my myself looking at my business. 
Yes. Yeah. Um, so hard, so hard to do. Um, but the, these were the top ones that just came to me and whether they're the right ones or not, I'm not sure. So I said analytical, caring, problem solver, leader, determined. Those are great words. So I'm just, I don't know why I write all these notes, but I do. Okay, yes. so now here's the real whammy. Okay. Hmm. What five words would you, what five negative words <laughs> to describe yourself <laughs> what are the five negatives that you think that because everything's all lovely and nice and all positive and everything where are the negatives what are the, where are the five kind of things that you think that you may be a little bit negative about and people might think that you're negative about oh okay That's not the negative. just i know negatives are not a popular thing to talk about and problems are not a popular thing to talk about but real life has negatives and problems so let's just take for five minutes and think about the negatives negatives i'll give you an example i'm a terrible procrastinator yeah okay so negatives negatives okay negatives um sometimes i think too big okay and how i how that comes out in both my business and my like I went on my good friend, uh, actually, you're going to love this. I'm going to show you this. I actually have it here at my desk, right? Look at this. This is made from felt. Oh, that's beautiful. I've done felting, but never to that degree. This was my bouquet that um, a good friend of mine for her wedding, for her hen party. We went on a felting day and we made the lapels for the men and we made these beautiful flowers. Now, I wish I could say, actually, I didn't make these, but um, anyway, so I had to make a flower <laughs> and I made this massive, <laughs> everyone was making these beautiful little dainty things. I made this massive big flower. Um, so uh, sometimes I think too big. Um, I think, I don't know if that's a negative or not. Um, okay, negative. Um, what else? Um maybe yeah. stick yourself too thin sometimes trying to help too many people yes um yes uh spreading myself thin yes possibly um and i think i i, I think that's probably something that i definitely got better at um and and this year it's actually it's been very hard because i used to always say yes to people um and help them as much as I could no matter what and at the expense sometimes of myself and this year I've actually began to say no and it's it's a funny it's a quite empowering it's empowering but it's very hard because I've had a bit of um I've had some negative feedback on it um because it actually put people out you know when I I just, you know, you can't do everything and I can't say yes to everything as much as my heart would love to. Um, I just can't. And um, it's empowering. But uh, when you're on your way to your own greatness um, and saying yes to yourself, the truth is you have to say no to some other people. And I think I lived a life for a very long time saying yes to everyone for everything. And um it's yes. a very hard thing to do. I mean, you and I both um, were invited and were kind of expected. I have a ticket for the Women's Inspire um, a meetup tomorrow in Cork. And I was absolutely set on going. I was going to get up at six o'clock in the morning and leave. And I've had to say no because I physically can't do it. Yeah. So and yeah. It's part of everything. So I don't want to dwell too much on this negative thing, but it's just really important to... Be aware of the negatives of your brand, okay? So my health, and everyone who knows me knows that I have health issues, okay? That's one of the negatives of, my, of, of who I am as a person, okay? Yeah. So by being aware of it, I can make it part of my brand. Mm -hmm. And then when I put up, I'm very sorry, I can't go to Cork. I'm just not well enough to go to Cork. There's almost a, a sense of understanding. And I think in your brand as well, showing vulnerability is not a bad thing. Yeah. And it, it, 
the neg- you don't need to dwell on the negatives, but being aware of them. Like you said, what the first one you came up with was that you think too big. And I'm sure if you think a bit longer after the call, you'll find a few more negatives. But being aware of them, you can either control them, and this goes again towards brand existence. So you can control them that they're not going out of control out there. Yeah. Thanks. So if you know that it's a problem, you're in control of it. Whereas if you don't know that it's a problem, <laughs> oh, God, that mother, she's always thinking big, does she ever follow through? Now, I don't mean to be horrible to you, but that's the kind of thing that crazy people think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know the first time I met you was through your Shine Adventure last year, and I was just in awe of how you thought so big and delivered. Mm. But not everyone sees things the same. So it's just really important to, when you're creating your brand, and the next kind of step that we're going to get onto with the brand today, I've, I've probably got too much to do today, but we'll see how far we go, is to start looking at your elevator pitch and everything. And what you want to do is to get across a very short amount of space, all this, the, 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 the <coughs> are, that you're actually an analytical, you're a techie kind of person, you, you get everybody you're a problem solver. You see things and you solve problems for people and you get them through the bottleneck about getting online. Yes. So pulling all, all these words that we've got floating around there. Mm-hmm. And also it helps by looking at the negatives and the positives and all the other words and stuff like that. So helpful. That should be a really, really positive word. But that can be a negative word because if you're helping too many people, you're spreading yourself too thin. Yes, okay. So I, I, I think kind of the determination, <laughs> the passion, I think the heartful is just such an amazing thing because that's from somebody who knows you, not very, very well, but we know each other's colleagues and friends, is that you are a very, very capable businesswoman with a heart. Thank you. And you bring that 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 real strong sense of capability that it doesn't matter what things thrown at you, you can figure a way through it, you can do the problem solving to get through it, <coughs> you do it with heart. Mm. And then maybe part of your brand needs to show the vulnerability that sometimes, guys, I'm sorry, I've taken on too much. I had to take a step back. And I think you've done that before on your Facebook Live and stuff like that. But it's about figuring out who you are and then being consistent so the messaging that goes out there is always consistent to the brand that is Martha Fraser. Actually, that is really, um, yeah. That is, and I think as well for anyone who's watching this, um, as you're going on in just connecting what you're saying there, as you're going on in your online business, I remember when I first started and and I was doing videos and, and I, I thought I had to be this, hi, this is, Martha Fraser, bum, 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 and I am X, Y, Z, and bum, bum, bum. And then I, you know, you begin to find your voice. And what I realized was my voice was just me as me and not trying to be this, because at the start, a couple of years ago, video was very professional and it had to be very stiff, whereas now video is so raw, it's so natural. And I think just what you said there, Kerry, about, um, connecting in those words like say the heart for me would be very important and what I'm realizing now actually is I'm putting a lot of more structure in my business and I have to say that I I when you implement terms and conditions and you put more structure in your business I'm realizing now that I have to bring this heart into that as well um and um, because otherwise the terms and conditions and structure may seem very unheartful. And, 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 and out of alignment with your brand. Yes. Because, yes. you know, the, the brand that, that, that we see is that your picture on Facebook and the colors and everything, that's the very front-facing brand. But when you give a client a set of terms and conditions, that's part of your branding. Yeah, yeah. And so... So keeping those, the, this kind of um, yeah. heart, I think heartful is such a really, that, that's the word that's going to also make you different to someone else. You, you're, you're, you have a huge amount of heart in what you're doing. So you're there for people. You'll deal with all their problems. You'll get them online. You'll, you're a 
problem solver, you'll get all the business done, but you'll get it done with heart. Yes, yeah. And that starts to kind of pull everything together. Yeah. So maybe when, I don't even think I have that chocolate in my bag, because I don't think I bought one, but like almost um, what's coming to mind, don't have one like that, is something like with a really strong um, core, but with a little bit of a soft marshmallow interior. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A walnut whip. A walnut whip, absolutely. That's and not, a nut on top. <laughs> and you know that walnuts look like brains, so there you have it. There you go. Mark has a walnut whip. I'm going to go down to Joyce's and I'm going to buy you some walnut whips. <laughs> and I love walnut whips. <laughs> I do too. I the first time I had them was when I, when I was living in South Africa and I came to England and a friend of mine asked me to bring them back to South Africa for her. Yeah. And um, I did, and I fell in love with them. And when I got married, my sister-in-law brought me like a dozen walnut whips as a wedding present. <laughs> <laughs> walnut whips had to come into it. Okay, so I plan to do this tomorrow, but I'm going to do it today because I think it's it's relevant to where we are now. I have a little tool that I developed, and it's partly about the brand, but it's also partly about marketing because. Your brand is an element of your marketing mix. Okay, mm -hmm. so this little tool is called the marketing wheel. And yeah. I have it printed out here. I can go through it with us today. So it, literally it works in a wheel. So you go round and round and round. So you start at the top of the wheel with you. So who are you? Okay. And that is really who are you as an essential brand. So you're this mentor that you take people online. You're a heartfelt person. That's your, that's your brand. And you really should try and do a, a almost a consciousness writing exercise to write up who you feel you are, okay? And then you go around the wheel and you hit your product and service. So what is the product and services that you offer? And quite, quite often um, we land with a product list this long or products that are very kind of... Um, Lots of different legs so it can be this and can be that. And my advice would be to try when you're doing this exercise to keep your products as clean as possible. So it's not that I don't do other things because I do do other things, but my core product in my business is a three-month branding course program that I take people on. That's my core product. So that's the one I'm thinking of. I have one client who's doing it on a she every time she needs help, she phones me and we make a transaction and I help her. I have another client that is on a year-long retainer because I'm actually not doing branding for him, I'm doing marketing for him. So it's not to say that you can't have variations, but when you're doing your brand thinking, mm -hmm. think cleanly of the product that you're gonna offer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or products or services, whatever. Okay. And then, I mean, I don't have to tell you a lot of this because you know a lot of this yourself. You then go into thinking about your ideal customer. And anybody who's worked in business, marketing or branding will tell you that actually having that vision of the ideal customer is so critical because it, it, it actually determines how you position your brand. Yes. So if you, for example, your ideal customer is a woman, then you can go with quite a feminine brand. If your ideal customer is a man, you want to go with something that's really kind of gender neutral or quite masculine. If your customer is, um, if your ideal customer is somebody that's working in the um, alternative health field. Yes. That's going to determine what your brand looks like. Yes. Yeah. So it starts to, to, to make differences. And I had the perfect example with one client. I was trying to explain to her and she's going, but I don't want to have one client. I, I don't want to stick to one particular type of person that I'm dealing with. And I, we, we'd gone backwards and forwards and there was a bit of a language barrier as well. And the next thing she sent me an email and she said, um, if I was a hairdresser, I wouldn't only want to do women with red hair in their 50s. So she was obviously talking about me. So <laughs> I went back to her and I said, that's fine, but you could get known. I think I mentioned this yesterday. You could get known as the colorist that helps people who are mm -hmm. trying to keep young. Yeah. 
But the young guy walks in, or the hot young guy with abs walks in, and he wants a haircut. You're not going to turn him away. But it's just about having that clarity of brand. So when you are putting, and if you if you go back to the chocolates or you go back to any big products, perfumes are great one. Cigarettes, we don't see adverts of those anymore, but they used to be some amazing cigarette adverts. Everything that they do. So if you take, I was watching this morning Ferrara Russia advert and they've got the new advert where they show the making of the chocolate and the sensual part of that. And then you're picking it off the tree like a fruit. Yes, so healthy. <laughs> they are trying to change their branding a bit because their branding used to be quite elitist and they're now trying to make it as a celebration brand. Mm. That's what they're trying to do. So if you look at, look at adverts, you'll see that the... Once people have figured out the brand and the brand archetype that they're going to be, and then they've figured out who they're trying to reach, everything will determine the packaging, the adverts, the print adverts, everything is going to, de- going to be, be related to the actual brand. Everything relates back. Mm. I'm trying to think of some ads I've seen recently. Oh, uh, you know which my favorite ad at the moment is the Skittles ad. I haven't seen it. Oh, it's brilliant. Basically, there's this giraffe and he's eating a rainbow and then there's Rastafarian and he's milking the giraffe and Skittles are coming out instead of milk. <laughs> it's bonkers. It's crazy. We spoke about Skittles yesterday. It's fun. It's it's appealing to the people who like quirky, crazy things. I don't like Skittles, but I could go and buy a bag just because I love that ad. <laughs> and that's me. I'm quirky and crazy and whatever. Rebel, whatever. So it's really important to have a very clear... Um, in my program, I would spend like a whole session on the ideal customer because it's so important related back to your brand. So what you I I went through with one customer and she was going on about her brand being strong and determined and everything else like that. When I looked at her brand, everything was pale peach Mm. and really relaxed and very warm and fuzzy. So it's just not tying up. Yeah. So you, you have to you have to tie that up with what your customer is going to be drawn to. In my chocolate bag. Okay, these are not very healthy chocolates. They Kellogg nutri They're actually not very healthy. And they probably have the same amount of calories as a crunchy or something else I can pull out of my bag. But this is the this is a nurturing brand. They're saying, you know, I'm trying to be healthier. So it's green. It's it's appealing to people <laughs> who don't want a chocolate. But it's actually the same calories. Yeah. yeah. So, but they, they've branded it. The other one I've got in my bag here, which is the one that we're seeing all the month, is Fulfill. So this is a Fulfill coconut chocolate protein bar. So that's saying it's going to give you energy and it's going to give you strength and all that kind of stuff. It's not. It's actually, yes, it's got more protein than another chocolate, but on a calorie level, it isn't. But they've gone and branded this as this is a better alternative. So it's got kind of, it's got loads of information on the back. So it's it's all about who you're trying to reach. They're kind of trying to reach the people who are trying to be healthy, taking protein shakes, mm. et cetera. So that ideal customer is really important. Now, <laughs> this to me, this is the bottom of the, of the, um, the circle. And this is the real critical part. This is the crunch. Okay. Your ideal customer. So let's just, um, can you give me your ideal customer like in a sentence? Um, so my ideal customer is someone who is in business a couple of years and who wants to expand uh, their business online, who wants further reach. Um, so it could be a therapist, a coach, a trainer. Um, I've had a, such a varied group of people through my door um now a friend of mine is trying to convince me to work with female entrepreneurs only um i haven't taken the plunge yet but um it's it's in the pipeline but i don't i don't see it yet but she's working on me um so for me my ideal client is someone who's working um perhaps set up their business and they realize that they don't have a strategy. They need further clarity on their bread and butter business. And then they want to expand it further to online. Okay. Now think of one person 
out of all the people that you've dealt with, just think of one person and bring them into your mind. Yep, got her. <laughs> okay. Now, tell me about that person, not about their business. I want to know how old they are, what color their hair is, how many kids they've got, are they married, are they single, what are their hobbies? Tell me that part of that person. Okay, so um, early 30s, dark hair, um, uh, engaged, and um, yeah, <laughs> what, else, what else can I tell you? Okay. So it wouldn't be a mom. It wouldn't be a mom. Mompreneur at this point in time. Um, she wants to plan a family. Okay, so she's looking to have a business that's going to relate to that family. Okay, where is she living? She's actually in Galway. Okay, does she have any hobbies? Is she into fitness or is she into um, theatre? What are her hobbies? Fitness and health. Fitness and health. Okay. So you need to make this whole picture and like a, a really fulsome picture. This is how brand managers do it when they're branding chocolate or washing powder or softener or Febreze or whatever. Okay. So Febreze, they're looking for people who have smokers in the house, teenagers in the house. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of thing. So what you have to then ask is how are those people consuming information? And this is really critical because if you are trying to reach the sort of 18 to 25 year olds, they no longer watch TV. They watch YouTube. Mm. Okay. So you need to almost go and ask that customer and ask her, how does she consume information? How much time does she spend on Facebook? Now, if you had loads of money and you had a big company, what you'd be doing at this point is you'd be holding a focus group mm. and asking these questions. So how do they consume their, <coughs> their information and where do they hang out? And those two are the really critical things for putting your branding plan into place. Mm -hmm. so if she, I, I would imagine she's probably on Facebook. How long is she on Facebook? How many days does she spend on Facebook? Um, does she go on every day? Does she constantly scroll? D does she go on Twitter? Is she on Instagram? Instagram is a great one for foodies and stuff like that. So get into a real kind of detail about how they get the information. I no longer buy a newspaper. I, the last time I bought a newspaper, I was in it, and that's why I bought it, and it's probably lying on my door here. Um, I don't buy newspapers. I get my news.